If you can't spot any major visual differences between these two clips of Resident Evil Village, then I have some awesome news for you. One of them is running at about 55 frames per second, and the other is kicking out 140 frames per second at 4K resolution. No hardware upgrade was required. I've spent the last few days playing with AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR, and it's kind of blowing my mind, and we need to talk about this, because it seems like AMD's newest open source tech will be a literal game changer for Linux gamers on everything from budget integrated graphics to high-end gaming powerhouses. But how do you enable FSR, and how do you use it? How do you tell it's even running? What are its limitations? Coming up in this video, I'll do my best to answer all of that and show you more examples of FSR in action. Welcome back to Linux for Everyone and welcome home. Uh, before we get too deep into this, I just wanna thank Tuxedo Computers, as always, for making all of the content you see on this channel possible. They have enabled me to take this from a hobby to a job, and uh, they even made this video possible because I've been doing a lot of FSR testing on the incredible Pulse 15 laptop, which features an AMD Ryzen 4800H processor, which is actually one of the, the perfect candidates uh, to demonstrate how important this FSR tech is. So yeah, I have spent all week down this AMD FSR rabbit hole, and for the most part, I have walked away impressed. Before I show you why, let's start at the very top with a brief overview of what exactly is AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution. In a nutshell, FSR is an open source solution that uses upscaling technologies to give you higher frame rates and higher resolutions than your hardware is capable of delivering natively. Yes, even AMD, a company who's always selling new graphics cards, advertises this as a feature that delivers a better experience without needing to buy a new graphics card. <laughs> And it's kind of the perfect tool to have during this ongoing GPU shortage. But FSR doesn't just work on newer AMD graphics cards. It works on GPUs as old as the Radeon 460, 470, and 480, and yes, the Vega 56 and 64. It works on Ryzen CPUs that have integrated Radeon graphics, what we call APUs. It even works on NVIDIA's latest RTX graphics cards and all the way back to their 10 series lineup. Now, officially, FSR is only supported and integrated into about 17 or 18 games so far. But technically, it's a game agnostic technology. And because the wizards working on Steam Proton are constantly making Linux gaming better and better, FSR can be used for every single non-native game in the Steam library. That's like tens of thousands of games. As long as it's using Proton to play, meaning it's using the Vulkan API, you can enjoy FSR on Steam. To use AMD FSR with your Steam library, you will need the custom version of Proton GE, the one from Glorious Egg Roll. I really believe this will eventually appear in our Steam settings, but for now, there's a few extra steps required. You know what, it might be worth the effort though, especially for low spec gamers. So first requirement, you've gotta have Glorious Egg Rolls Proton GE. Fortunately, we have a short guide on the channel that shows you how to easily install it and update it. Follow that and you're good to go. But the short version is, Install a great app called Proton Up and make sure you're using Proton version 6.13-GE-1 or newer because those have FSR baked right in. As always, links are in the description for you, so take advantage of them. The next step is to add this launch command to any Steam Play game you want to use FSR with. So you just right click the title, select properties, and in the launch option box, type in all caps, wine underscore full screen underscore FSR equals one. And then a space and then percent command percent. Unless 
It's a game that has official FSR support, like Terminator Resistance or Resident Evil Village. In those cases, just use the supplied in-game options. Both of these games run really well on Linux, by the way, and on these, FSR just works. It just works, as long as you're using Proton GE. Next, uh, go down to the Compatibility tab and tell Steam to use the custom Proton GE version. Right now, you'll need to execute these steps for every game individually. And a couple caveats to be aware of. You have to be running the game in full screen for FSR to work properly. And since FSR is an upscaler, you need to manually set your in-game resolution lower than your monitor's native resolution. As an example, if you want to see FSR in action on your 1080p monitor, set your in-game resolution to 720p. If you're on a 4K monitor, set your in-game resolution to 1440p. Now it's early days for AMD FSR in general and especially on Linux, and there's currently no reliable visual indicator that FSR is even working. During my testing, I mean, I, I saw improved frame rates and sharper image quality, but sometimes I wondered, is it really working or is it just stuck on that lower resolution and it's not upscaling and I'm not even really noticing? If you want to be sure, just compare your in-game resolution to your monitor's current resolution. All right, so hopefully that was a good explainer and I kept it brief enough not to bore you and uh, you guys are able to get FSR up and running on your systems. Now what I wanna do in the back half of this video is give you four examples of FSR in action and explain how each scenario can be really, really beneficial. All right, so let's kick things off with the Ascent, which I featured recently in a Will, Will it, it Linux, Linux episode. The Ascent is a surprisingly demanding game for its genre. And so I was kind of forced to have a decent frame rate. I was forced to bump it down to 720p. And what you're gonna see is a subtle but meaningful impact on the, the crispness of the text. We get almost no reduction in the frame rates and the text is just a little bit more readable. Now, I captured the Ascent on the Pulse 15 laptop, which has integrated graphics. Now, let's take it to the complete other end of the gaming spectrum. This is Borderlands 3 running on my production PC, which is a Falcon Northwest Talon that's kitted out with a Ryzen 3900X, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a Radeon 6800 XT, and I love it. It's my, it's my gaming beast. It's my big boy. So I wanna play a game like Borderlands 3 at 4K 60 FPS with everything, all the graphics eye candy cranked up. Well, I can't do that. 4K takes a lot of horsepower and I can't quite pull off 4K 60 with Borderlands 3 on Linux, mainly because of that slight performance hit that we, that we have using a translation layer like Proton. Okay, so what you're seeing in this side-by-side -side, on the left is Borderlands 3 running 4K at its native resolution on the monitor, ultra quality, everything cranked up, getting about 45 to 55 FPS. On the right side is with AMD FSR enabled. So what's happening is it's being upscaled from 1440p to 4K and it's sharpening the image and it is giving us mostly a consistent 60 plus FPS experience. And honestly, to my eye in motion, it looks about the same. Now I'm positive that if we scrutinized high resolution snapshots of these benchmark runs, we would find some minor flaws. But for me, this is a huge, huge win. Terminator Resistance is an official FSR title and it does run brilliantly on Linux. And I'm just gonna touch on this one briefly because I think I wanna devote an entire video to it, uh, doing some runs on a low spec machine as well as a much, much higher end machine to show you the impact that FSR has. But in a nutshell, a huge performance uplift 
when we're looking at this game in 4K and really almost almost no visual degradation, especially in motion when you're not sitting here picking apart the image. Now, back to the Pulse 15 laptop with its Ryzen APU, and you're looking at about 30 FPS at 1080p low, and then simply applying FSR gives you almost double the frame rate in the same scene. So just a quick peek at Terminator Resistance, and like I said, I think I would like to devote a full video to this one down the line. One more quick example of FSR goodness to show you, and that comes via Resident Evil Village. Now this is another officially supported FSR title, and oh my god, this game is bananas. Um, if you haven't played this game, <laughs> and you like horror games and you maybe you played the first three Resident Evil games back in the day, this is a return to form. This game is frightening and immersive. Now that intro scene that you just saw, I played through that probably five times with FSR on and off, and I could not honestly detect any major visual differences, and yet, the frame rate was boosting up from 55 FPS to 140 FPS. And in this scene, we're going from about 37 to 40 up to like 100 plus frames per second. It's, it's really an astounding piece of technology. Okay, I'll get out of here before this video gets way too long, but listen, go play with FSR, play with it on Nvidia, play with it on Radeon and let me know what your experience is like. If you have any questions about using it or installing it, I'll be lurking around in the comments. And if you have suggestions uh, for any content really, but any uh, FSR specific or Linux gaming specific content that you'd like to see, drop that in the comments too. Thanks a ton for watching. And uh, until the next video, you guys take care and take care of each other. See ya.